Okay, what we're going to do today is we are going to write some code that is going to check the GPIO uh, state that is attached to this button on the LilyGo display. Uh, now, the technique, there are two techniques that you can really use to check inputs. There's an interrupt service routine, which is the one we're not going to do today. We will do it next. Uh, we're going to do what's called polling. So polling is we go and check. We check to see what the state of the input is. The interrupt service rep routine technique is where uh, essentially an internal alarm goes off and goes, hey, something's happened, and it interrupts whatever we're doing, and then we service that, hence the name interrupt service routine. So, but we're going to look at polling. Polling would be more used when you want to see human press buttons or if you're using keypads or that. So there's there's a role for both of them, and we're going to we will look at interrupt service routines. Chart. We're going to start our main application and that end is going to go down to the entry point in main. And then from in main, we are going to create a new task. And that task is going to jump over to here. And it's going to be we're going to create a task. And that task is going to set up its own events loop. So it's going to be the task. That's going to run forever. In our main application, we are going to create the main event loop, and that is also going to run forever. But periodically, the main event loop is going to ask, hey, what's the logic level? So this is over here is going to, in its event loop, it's going to read the GPIO and it's going to pass that GPIO information back to the main event loop. Oops. It's going to pass this back to the event loop here. So the main event loop is going to get access to the GPIO value that's here. This is going to run and loop forever and this is going to run and loop forever. They can loop at different times. So that's in essence what we're going to do. Okay, so let's get started. Hopefully I remembered to put an intro onto the video. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna start creating our GPIO. Now this follows on from our previous uh, chat about using virtual tasks. So we're gonna use a virtual task. It also is hopefully a lot condensed than our, the very long video where I did setting up the virtual tasks and the GPIO and everything from scratch. Uh, so let's get started. So as usual, we're going to create a new folder. So let me put that on the screen there. Okay, so we go F1, ESPIDF new project. I'm gonna give it a project name and I'm gonna call this GPIO and we're gonna be using the polling method. Polling. And we're gonna be using the task as well for this. And I'm gonna change, I am gonna change my location as well. And I want to put it on my E drive. I'm trying to keep all the ones I'm doing for these ESP ones slightly different location. Okay, and as usual, I'm using the Lilygo uh, display chip. Uh, so and it's ESP thirty uh, two S three via the SP prog. I know it happens with Compact Seven can change it later. I'm going to leave the components directory blank. Choose template, template, and create. And this is going to say that we want a new window. Yeah. Okay, so our, <clears throat> excuse me, our, okay, our new application has opened up there. I have zoomed in on the text there to make it a little bit easier to see. We're connected to COM port 7 um, using an ESP32 S3. Um, and here is our directory that we're using. And let's run the configuration editor to change stuff for this specific chip. So the ones for this one, and we've talked about this in the past, we need to change our flash mode to QIO. We need to change our memory size to 16 megs. And then in specific, we need to change our frequency to 240. We hit save and you'll see it'll, this is the one that's here. It'll create a new one and it'll change to old. So once you see that there, you know it's been done. We close this down. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use tasks. Tasks are just a quick recap. There is a video there. If you're not familiar with tasks, tasks let us 
run multiple event loops in parallel. Recommend if you don't know anything about tasks on ESP32 IDF, have a look at my video on that. And as usual, I'll link it below. Now, when you're dealing with tasks, you need to have certain headers loaded. Uh, so we need that for our tasks and a couple of other things. So there's always some headers that we need and I'm just going to copy them in. I keep them over here in the file for sort of standard ones that I'm using. So this one gives us access to strings. We might be using it in this, but it's always handy to have it. This is the free Ortos uh, operating system one. And this one, next one I'm putting in, allows us to log stuff to the screen. Uh, <coughs> so that's the log.h1. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here as a point of entry, and then we're going to set up a GPIO task. Uh, as I said before, it's always good practice to run all our different libraries and different files here. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call that gpio underscore task h. So that's our library there. It's going to open it up here. I'm going to put it into a separate window. So close that there. So now here are our two files that's open. Okay, so we need to include this app. This file here knows nothing about this file here, even though it's in its directory here. So we need to include it. So we come down and we hit include and we start typing and it should prompt us for the name. So there's our include. So now it knows that this exists. With any header file, we only want to be including it once. So we always type in this keyword, pragma once. And now we put in our includes that we need for this. Well, we're going to be using uh, Ortos and we're going to be using tasks. Um, let's not let's log stuff as well. So we need to have several headers. So I've included strings again, uh, Ortos, uh, tasks and our log file here. Now, when we're logging stuff, we need a tag. The tag lets us put out additional information to the screen. So over here, we will go static, constant, so it's static, so it's only accessible by this file. It's constant, it's not going to change. It's handy for memory allocation. It's going to be a character, array, or pointer. <coughs> Excuse me, and we call it tag main. Oops, let's spell main correctly. And we'll go and we put the message that will display. Let's do it in main. So we're going to need to do something similar. So I'm going to copy the first half of this over here. And we will call it tag uh, GPIO, tag GPIO, and that's going to be in GPIO task. That's what it's going to say on the screen. Right, so it's going to come in here, it's going to invoke these, and what we need is in our main loop here, so we're going to need to have a setup for the GPIO, and then we're going to have our event loop. So our event loop is going to run forever. So this is just a for loop that runs forever. And what are we going to do? Well, let's just for testing. And I am a big believer in testing as you go. So let us uh, dump some information to the screen and then we'll have a delay. Now we're going to have a delay. So let's have our, we'll put up some defines here and anywhere it sees a uh, delay main. and anywhere it sees this, uh, uh, form of uh, delay main, it's going to replace it with a value. So let's say we'll delay the main loop by 250 milliseconds. And we're going and remember with the fines, you don't put a semicolons. And let's copy this over here. And we won't, well, we're not in the main delay in the GPIO task. So this is going to be our polling rate. So we're going to read our input, then we're going to basically put this loop over here to sleep for a bit. And then we're going to come back and do it. So let's say we want to read uh, the inputs every 100 milliseconds. OK, so this is our delay. This is our delay here. And what we're going to do is we're going to dump some information to the screen for testing. So we're going to go ESP underscore log I. And it's saying, hey, tag. Well, the tag we're using is tag main. And it's uh, what are we going to, what's our message? We're going to put uh, Z, Z, Z in main. We'll just put Z, Z, Z. That'll do. So we're going to do that and then we're going to do a delay. And to do a delay, it's always going to be V task delay. And it is this the amount of milliseconds we want to delay by, which in this case is delay main, divided by the port tick 
period milliseconds. Okay, it's just one of those things you're going to have to remember. Uh, four tick period milliseconds. So this is going to come along here. It's going to do this loop. We're not doing anything here at the moment, uh, but we're going to do this loop. We can test that there now and see that that works. So let's, uh, we've done that. Let's do our build. Remember, our first build will take a while because it'll have to compile all this. So I'm going to start the build process and then I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so we're just finishing up the build there. It's given us a couple of errors there uh, that it has created this tag GPIO, but it's never been used. So that's this over here and it's going to give us a yellow squiggly line to say, hey, you created this, you never used it. We've got two hours size of our memory, so we know that oh, that's good. So we've built it, so now we must flash it. We haven't told this how we're going to flash. So we're going to go UART, and it says now UART, and now we're going to flash the device. Uh, I don't know about you, but these LilyGo uh, displays have a serious issue. Sometimes they won't flash, and you have to hold the reset and the BOT button. But that has, uh, that has flashed, and so we're going to monitor mode. So what we should see there is, so here we go. We're seeing in main ZZZ, which is this. So the tag is this in main, and then there's our message ZZZ. It sticks in the colon. And these numbers here that you can see are, are incrementing by 250. So this is milliseconds. So that's running away. So basically what's coming happening here is it's creating this event loop, and that event loop is running forever. So what we need to do now is, and in our main application, this will do our, all our heavy synchronizing different things happening. But what we need to do now is we need to go over here and we need to create a task. So we have a static constant. So static, remember, is essentially private, can only be used um, private uh, uh, things. Uh, so it can only be used by the file that it's in. And then we're going to put our public one. So it always is good practice to put a definition for your function. So what we're going to call a function, we're going to call it it's public. So it's, we just use the, the, we don't use the static keyword. And we'll say set up GPIO and task. Okay, set up GPIO task, we'll just say. And we're not going to be passing anything into that. So we're going to leave that private. So this is just a definition. We're just telling the compiler that, hey, we're going to be using this. Now it's gotten dots because it's saying, hey, this doesn't exist. You've defined this, but it doesn't exist anywhere. So we need to do all the, um, uh, the methods here, sorry, uh, methods. So we'll just call this methods here. So we have, uh, we, we need to create this down here. And we'll go curly braces this time. So here is our actual function that's going to be doing the setup. And we're going to call this from here. So let's put that in here. So we're going to call set up gpio task there it is and we're not passing in anything and there it goes so the main application is going to come down here it's going to jump here find this and execute this code and we can be let's make sure that that is actually going to work so what we will do is we go esp log i so we're going to dump to the screen we want to tag our tag in this one is called tag underscore gpio and we're going to say setting Oh, now that's all we're going to do. Let's uh, save that and let's uh, flash, build flash and go into the monitor mode. This shouldn't take that long to build because we're only adding a couple of lines of code. So what we should see is at the very start of our code, we should see this and then we should see this uh, endless loop. We'll have to scroll back up, obviously, to see that because it's going to go into it. And now, OK, so let's have a look at the start here. And that's boot, 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 ESP, CPU, start. Okay. In GPIO task, setting up GPIO. So we can see that it comes down here, jumps over here, executes that code, and then goes on executing forevermore the uh, event, the main event loop. So that's the setup of the GPIO task. So what we're actually going to have to do is we're going, we need a task. So all we're doing is we're going in here. So we need a little mini event loop. And this is going to be private. And it has to be first. For tasks, they have to be static. So we're going to have a static loop. So we're going to call this GPIO event loop. And so this is going to run nonstop. And of course, it's not just static, it's static. Not going to return any parameters, and we're not going to give it any parameters. 
And there is our definition for that. And in here, we're going to call this. Now it's saying, hey, you've defined this, but you haven't actually given us uh, any code. Now with tasks and that, there's several other variables that we always need or should create. There is one of them which is called the X, which is the handler. Uh, it's a pointer to the task where it's where that bit of code is running in the memory. We also have to, uh, to give a certain amount of memory over to it. And we also need to have a priority uh, on the task. And we also uh, need to uh, let it give a mechanism for passing in parameters to the task. So we have a couple of definite defines that we should do. So the first one is at the, st at the start is uh, stack, S-T-A-C-K, size. And 2048 is a good starting point. And we can always change that down later. Uh, the next one is the priority. And the priority is uh, if two tasks fire at the same time, which one gets, which one gets uh, carried out first? Uh, so you can have P-R-I. T P or I O I T Y. I'm gonna say five. It's, this is valid. We're only gonna have one task, so this could be one, ten, million. It doesn't matter. This task is always going to be executing at the same time. So that's our task. So we have these. We should create these now. Uh, there are two other variables that we should create uh, for this, and one of them is so they're static. It's unsigned integer eight of data type, which is there. And this is our task parameters. We're not going to be using this. We're not going to be passing in any parameters, but we still need to give this variable into the task loop when we're creating it. The next one is a very important one. So again, it's static. I spelled static correctly, might help. And this is our what is known as our task handle data type. And we can call it whatever we want. Uh, we can call it GPIO handle. Let's call it GPIO handle. And this is the memory of where the task has been created. And this is very important because when the task is created, it actually gives it a value. So we should actually set this to null at the start. So that's set to null, uh, which basically means no, it's not given to any point to <coughs> any memory location. When the task is created, if the task is created successfully, this handle will then contain the value where the, in memory where it is. This value can be then, if we want to, use to kill the task. So if we ever need to stop the task, this is very important. So it's very important. You have to give it in. You have to pass in a GPIO handle. You can then see by testing the GPIO handle if the task was created. And later on, you can actually stop the task if you need to. So these are very important ones. And I probably may have forgotten one. <laughs> so anyway, so we have... Uh, the GPIO task, we're coming into here, we're doing this. And what we need to do now is start the GPIO event loop. So we've created this, but we haven't written any code. And this is what's going to run forevermore. Copy that, stick it on here. And so here, this is the task. Uh, so in our task here, setting up GPIO, uh, well, let's call it GPIO event loop. G, oops, GPIO event sorry me event loop there it is we're not passing in anything no and and that would call this loop here but that wouldn't run it as a task that would run it in parallel to this so if we just did this and then we had now this is not the way we're going to do it but let's just have a look at this so let's say we were going to have an event loop and this is just going to run forever uh, and do stuff. Well, it would come in here. Now this would work. It will come in here. It will go to set up GPIO task. It'll go to set up GPIO task. It'll output this to the screen, which we've seen, and then it would call this loop and this loop would run. But this is running within this. And then, so on, this would never end. So this would actually block. So the process would get stuck in this loop here and would never go beyond this down to that position. So it wouldn't actually be running as an event parallel to this. So that's not how we create a task. So how we create a task is we use a special command called vtask create. vtask create. Sorry, no. My bad. It's not vtask create. It's xtask create. 
There we go, X task create. And it's gonna want a load of parameters passed into it. So here, the first one it says is a task function data type, and it's a PV task code. So it's looking for a, uh, and what this is, is the actual pointer to the task function. And the task function is the GPIO uh, event loop. So we just type in GPIO event loop. So in essence, this is the name of the function that we're going to run our event loop in. The next thing it's looking for is a constant PC name. And this is just a name that we put in like here, GPIO task or whatever you want to. So if anything goes wrong, this will be output to the screen. Stack depth. Well, this is the variable that we created up here, stack size. <clears throat> stacked the sides. Okay, so that's there's there's something that I've done that's very silly now, and this could cause problems down the road. I have said stack size and have defined this as stack size, and if you notice it's saying 1500. So this has been defined elsewhere. So this name has been used. Uh, so I should really change that to something different. So I'm going to call it GPIO stack size. And I come back down to here. Go GPIO stack size. And you can see it's defined here, 2048. So that was that was that was nearly that was a, a bit of a a mistake we could have made. And you know what? I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to go GPIO task priority for this one. So we've put in this stack size. The next thing I want is a void pointer. Uh, to P, PV parameters. So this is task params. So we've created this data type here, a task params. It's looking for a pointer though. So it's not the word task params, it's a pointer it's expecting. So we put in the ampersand symbol, which means the address of task params. So now it's giving it a pointer. It would actually take that task params and uh, would cause all sorts of problems. It wants now the uh, data type, uh, U-base type T, and it's priority, it's not a pointer. So we're going to replace it with this GPIO task priority. Oh, oops. Task priority. And then the very last thing it wants is another pointer, and it is to the, let's just make this a little bit wider so we can see everything. So it's looking for, a pointer of task handle underscore T type, which is our GPIO handle. Again, we've created GPIO handle here explicitly. It's not a pointer. So we need to pointerize this. So we need to go address of GPIO handle. <clears throat> so it's going to put that in there. And if the task was successfully created, this will no longer be null when it gets to that point. And you can certainly do a test down here to see if that's happened. Uh, all going well, what will happen is it'll come down here, go to GPIO task, jumps to GPIO task, it logs this, it then creates a task. And the task that's creating is this event loop. So in other words, this starts running. This event loop starts running. However, this is in an infinite loop where and what will happen is it will execute this event loop and then it will go back here and then run this event loop so we will have the main event loop running and in pseudo parallel we will have this task one and we can have multiple tasks so these can all be doing jobs checking parameters and doing different things so let's for just a moment all we'll do is we're going to put out some information that's all we're doing and so we're going to log to the screen just like we did before and in this one, it's tag GPIO. And we're going to uh, put the message uh, in GPIO event. Where this one here gives us our little Zs. This is going to give us a slightly different message. And then we're going to, going to have a little delay so that uh, it doesn't, the processor isn't just constantly churning. So VTAS delay. We did, remember, we created a delay up here, which we were set to 100. So this is going to run two and a half times faster than this loop. So for every two and a half of these, you'll see this two and a half times, <laughs> and then you'll see this. So we're going to see multiples of these. And we put in our delay time, which is delay GPIO task, and we divide that by port tick period milliseconds. 
So this will come in here, it'll do this, it'll delay for 100 milliseconds, and in parallel, this is going to be executing. So let's save all that up. We'll build it and see that we have any errors. Now it does, it'll give a, well not errors, but it'll give us warning about this PV task code and this GPIO vent loop. Don't worry about them. It comes along here. There's no problems. It's quite happy out. So let's flash that. It's flashed and let's go to our monitor. And hopefully, right. So there we go. There's a lot happening, but you can even see now uh, already. Let's go back up to the start. So it's coming down here, and that's not the start. So uh, the first thing, in GPIO task, setting up GPIO. So it's come down here, it's come into the entry point of the code. It's gone from set up GPIO task. It's found set up GPIO task. It's the first thing it does in that is logs to this tag, setting up GPIO. And that's, here we go, setting up GPIO. It then, the next thing that happens is, it comes down here and it goes, starts executing this event loop here. But it also creates this event loop here. So you can see it goes in main ZZZ, which is this. So it's gone to here. And then this task is executed. And this task it says in GPIO event loop. And remember, it's going to go asleep for 100 milliseconds. So as I said, two and a half times. Obviously, you can't do two and a half. So sometimes it's going to do three. Sometimes it's going to do two. So it comes down here and does this to the screen, goes to delay. Then this event loop is running, it's come out of its delay, and after it's the delay, it puts this on the screen, the ZZZ. Well, <laughs> sorry, let's go back up here. Uh, so it's in main ZZZ. Uh, see, these are just all going to keep on coming in. Uh, just pause that there. And you can see that it does two of them here, and then it does one of these, and then it does three. So this is because it's two and a half. So it's five, essentially, uh, is when it gets back in sync, sync, sequence. So what but what we can see is it's uh, it's doing this in main, and then it's doing these in GPIO tasks. They're happening uh, in parallel, in essence. So uh, this is where we're going to use now for reading our GPIO and reporting back to that screen there. So I happen to know, uh, and because we've talked about it before, but the uh, Lilygo, this button here, the one on the right, which is marked as key, uh, is GPIO number 14. And we got that from the file that in the factory file where I identified all the buttons. So we need to create a definition up here. So we are going to say, uh, 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 what we call it? We'll call it uh, GPIO button. And we're going to associate that. We're going to replace anywhere where it says GPIO underscore button with the number 14. Now, the, the way these boards have been designed, the button puts, pulls GPIO 14 to ground. So it puts it to ground. So it's just going to float. We need to put a resistor to pull it up to the uh, to the plus voltage line. So we need what's called a pull-up resistor. On some micros, you have to physically have them on the outside. The ESP is very handy because its GPIOs all have pull-up and pull-down resistors. So we're going to have a pull-up resistor. And we're also going to have to set the mode because GPIO stands for, a, for, for in, input or output. So it's an IO. So it can be an input, it can be an output. It can actually also be an input and an output. So you can actually read back if you've made a uh, set something on the output. So in our case, we need to define that as an input. So we need to do that. So we need to configure the button. So when we create the task, what we can actually do is we can either create it before the task or the event loop, but it's best to create it here at the start of this end event loop. Uh, before it goes into its endless loop, let us set up the GPIO uh, for that device. So what we need to do is we need to, we've already said GPIO button 14. So we need to create, to tell the uh, code set up the GPIO for, um, for input and pull up resistor. So how we do that is, well, we must include in our def definitions up here, we must include a, uh, file which is driver gpio 
So anytime you're going to be using GPIO, you must include this in the same way you must include tasks. So what we do is, so that will give us a whole library of uh, methods and we are going to use some of them. There's several ways you can set up uh, these. We're going to use the, this way is much handier if you're just using one or two inputs. So set direction, you can see there as I typed it, it was coming up. Set direction does exactly what you would imagine, whether it's going to be an input or an output. So we're going to go set direction and now it's asking for the GPIO number. The GPIO number is, in this case, 14, so it's GPIO button, is what we defined it as. And uh, we haven't told it whether we want it as an input or an output, so what we do is uh, we there are predefined words here, and it's GPIO uh, mode. And then we can see uh, when we go down to mode, there's input, output, input, output, disabled. There's loads of different ones. So we want uh, uh, input. And that's our direction. Now we must set up our pull up resistors. So it's GPIO. Again, set pull mode. And if you go to Expressive's website, you can see all these. Uh, them. Actually, that's what I'm going to do there. I'm just going to type this and then I'm going to pull up. The website for you so again it wants the GPIO which in this case is GPIO button we define that oops and it wants the GPIO what resistors internal resistors we're going to and it's GPIO we go pull up you can see this pull down disabled, pull down enabled, pull down only, pull up enabled, pull up disabled. Well, we're just going to go pull up only. So just give me a second, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to get up the website for Espresso. Okay, so there is the Espresso page and um, I'll put a link to this in the bottom of the file for remember. It tells you all the G different GPIO. Here's GPIO 14. So we can see this is also... If we were using JTAG to program this, well, we'd have a problem because this is on a JTAG port. Uh, strapping pins are the ones you want to avoid because when the device is booting, uh, whether to put it into programming mode or not programming mode, you need to exert a logic level on them. So you should avoid the strapping pins. Also, um, the uh, some of the one of the analog to digitals is uh, used by the Wi-Fi. So there's a couple of things you need to just be careful. So here's our one. It's uh, channel six of ADC2. So it's one of the A to digital analog to digital perverters. Um, and uh, it can also be configured as the, a real time clock uh, or JTAG. We're not really worried about any of those, uh, but you know, it could be uh, on a different project. Like for example, this one, GPI one and three is also used by this UART for TXD and RXD. So uh, you need to be careful what pins you're going to use. Anyway, with some boards like this, you know, it is what it is. There is, it's telling us uh, the header file, drivers under slash GPIO, and then it lists um, in a hard to read manner, um, the uh, the different functions uh, that are in the, uh, for using interest in pull-ups enabled, uh, pull-up disabled, pull-down enabled, and all this sort of stuff. So there's all our different uh, methods are given in this. So, um, right, uh, so now we have uh, that. Right, so we have set up our GPIO at this, and then we're going to go into our event loop. And what we're going to do in this event loop is we're really going to start reading the logic state of that input. Now, remember I said uh, we've just pulled up a pull up resistor, so we're pulling it up to the plus voltage. So that will read as a logic one. When the button is pressed, the button pulls that GPIO pin to ground, so it goes to a zero. So a one is the default state. So let us read um, a value. So we're putting this in this loop. So every time through the loop, this variable is going to be essentially uh, created and then destroyed. Uh, so it's probably not the best way of doing it, but we're just gonna test for the moment here. So we'll say logic state, and we're gonna see how we can do this in a little bit better one as we finish up. Logic state. So we're going to put this variable, we're going to set it to uh, whatever the level of that pin is. So we have a method for that. It's called GPIO uh, get level. 
So this is from our uh, ESP library and we need to pass into it the pin number that we want to read. So in this case, and that is what we called GPIO button. So now, oh, sorry, excuse me. So now these, this value logic state is going to uh, uh, dictate whether the button, oh, it's not going to dictate, it's going to represent whether the button is pressed or not pressed. So let's do an if on that. So if logic state, is equal to, well, it's going to be one or a zero. So if it's equal to zero, which is active, which is being pressed, then what we will put out, we will put out a message. We will say button pressed. And we can either do a an else on that so that when the button isn't pressed is not pressed uh, it won't display anything but we'll just leave it as this button pressed at the moment so if the users press the button then it should say button pressed so let's compile that and we can we can prettyify this there later but we're just testing our basic function uh, here okay it's so happy with everything let's flash that And let's go to monitor. So now all that we should see is our Zs because we've gotten, and the only time we should see something is when the button is pressed. And that's the right hand button there. So you can see it's there. Button's pressed, button's pressed. You can see it flicking when I stop pressing it. So now we're actually polling. And this is doing its magic here in parallel to this. So what would normally happen is we would not necessarily output anything to the screen here, but we would test it over here pressed but it's not pressed okay so now if we get rid uh well i want to leave this in here so the, the whole purpose of this is to to show you that it, this is working in parallel and it's checking this so there's nothing else happening here so but this information of the button pressed is not available to our main code here so that's something that we need to address so one of the ways we could there's several ways we could do this and then the first way i'm going to suggest is is a terrible way of doing it so what we could do is instead of making this a local variable here i'm just going to copy this i am going to make this a global variable i'm going to make it public and into logic state and we will say remember the resistor pulls it up so it's one so now in theory this is going to update this here and our main application can read this value here so then when we come back to here we can test that and we should never ever ever do that that's this is really bad it's and the reason i've shown this is it's a temptation to do this so what we'll do is um i am going to we'll do that we'll run it as code and you see that it'll work but we should never do it so what we're going to do is we're going to test this here so this is we've made this in the public we haven't put in the word static in front of it so that means that this application this file here has access to this variable so let's have a look at this so uh, what we will do is we will uh, we will test it over here so if logic state Is equal to zero. I'm gonna put something on the screen. Oops. Uh, main. Well, it's already gonna say main, so it's uh, active. We say we put the word active. If it doesn't see it, so if the button's not pressed. It's going to, we're going to put this sleeping thing. So main application, if it sees the button pressed, the button will change logic state down here in this read. If it sees it, it says active. It's going to say here button pressed and here's going to say active. If it doesn't see it, this isn't going to output anything and this is going to give us our sleeping. So as I said, <clears throat> don't ever do this. I'm doing it to <laughs> make a point. Flash that.
and now we go into monitor. So it's saying ZZZZ, so we should see, we're expecting to see two things happen now. We're expecting to see button pressed and the word active. And you can see, and you can see they're at different rates because again, these loops are running at different rates. So this loop here is running every 100 milliseconds where this one is going to sleep for two and uh, for a quarter of a second. Okay, so that obviously works. So why should you never? Should never directly access variables that are in uh, other, uh, I won't say objects because we're not in, <coughs> this isn't C++, but in these this header here, shouldn't access that directly. The reason being is when you write this library over here, if people are allowed, if other parts of the code are allowed to change variables, you don't know what sort of uh, bugs that will, so they're known as time bombs because if you do that, if you allow the user change here, well then maybe the user, there is nothing in this code here to say, uh, logic state equals zero, logic state equals 42. And this code here isn't expecting somebody external setting the logic state. It thinks logic state is only being set by this task here, within this task, when it reads the variable, the variable, uh, for the GPIO logic but this will compile this doesn't see anything wrong with this because it obviously doesn't know that um, you shouldn't be able to set them so it is a it is a ticking time bomb because this will potentially cause all sorts of uh, implications for your library and stuff happening over here that would be out of your control so you should never ever uh, let these variables and that's in this file be read so how you stop them from being read is, well, you go static. So now this variable is uh, only accessible by over here. So here can't read it. Well, you might say, well, that's that's a disaster. And how is main going to read it? Well, what you do is you create a public function that can read that variable, but it can only read it. It can't set it. So and these are known as getters. Uh, so it's get logic state. I usually uh, use the word get or set, depending if you're allowing someone set them or to get them. And you usually then give the variable name. So it's the variable logic state. So this is a getter for logic state. And actually, it should be right. So what we're doing is we're not going to pass anything in, we're going to just call it, and it's going to return the variable. So it's returning an integer. So it's return type is int. And it's public so over here we can see we will be able to get it so get logic state so we must write the code for that and the code for the getters are always going to be pretty much the same so all we're going to do is return logic state so we're going to return the variable logic state so logic state gets set here this is a a global to this file and it gets uh, it's going to be private because it's static. And then when we want to see the variable outside, we invoke this get logic state and that returns the value of the variable. So instead of saying if logic state, well, we can go if, so it's get logic state and it's a function we're calling and it's going to return. So before I type that up there, just type that, it'll give us, so it's saying uh, it's get logic state and it's returning an integer. And then I type that there. It's an integer, get logic state, and it's not accepting any variables. So all it's going to do is return an integer. We're going to test that for zero. The integer it's returning is logic state. Okay, so I'm going to, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this. Actually, we're going to get rid of this <coughs> statement because we only just want to see when it's active. And we're going to get rid of this testing here because we're going to display it here. That the button is active and let's uh, we'll actually say it um, button 14 ah, i'll just say button pressed so we're going to just say that button pressed so now all, all our testing for this is done down here get rid of that space so we're coming in here, we're testing, we're returning, we're using a getter. So we're, we're reading this variable by a getter, which is a much safer way of doing stuff uh, so that we can't uh, accidentally set it and mess up our uh, 
this file over here. So uh, let's build that. Should build fine. We'll see a slightly different uh, execution. We'll flash that down. We'll go to monitor it. Okay, that caught me for a second. I thought we weren't running because, yeah, we've dumped all our um, when nothing is happening logs. So it's running there. So what should be happening here is this event loop is running. It's reading the logic state. And then it's this is calling this. It's using a getter to get the logic state back. And when the button is pressed, this is the only time we go into any output. So you can see as I hold down the button, it says button pressed. And then it stops saying it because I've stopped holding down the button. And you can see the timestamp is changing. So that's how to use a task uh, as a GPI for reading the GPIO as a polling technique. So again, just a quick recap. What did we do? We came in here, we set up the GPIO task. So the GPIO task dumps some text to the screen. Use this X task create command. This X task create command takes as its arguments the function that we want to run as our event loop. And it takes some other parameters here as well. Uh, when it starts running, it come, when this is executed, it jumps down and in parallel to what's happening over here, it starts doing these uh, functions or these calls. So then the code then here went into this loop, testing this logic. Over here, it set up a GPIO button 14 as an input. It attached a virtual, uh, not virtual, a real pull-up resistor internally on it. And then it created an event loop here. This event loop here updates a local variable or a, a variable to call logic state. And it reads the input. It reads the GPIO level of button 14 and it passes that into logic state. It then goes for a little snooze and then it comes around and it reads it. So this is reading at a period of every 100 milliseconds, the logic level here. We are then, this is a variable that we don't want to directly access out here. So we created this getter function. So this get logic state is global. It comes down here and it's, it reads, it invokes this and this returns this variable back to this bit of code. So here we have, when we say this, we're actually getting the value here returned, which is logic state. We're testing it if it's zero. It'll be zero if the button's pressed because that's pulling the GPIO pin to ground. And in this case, all it does is it outputs the word button pressed, but you could have other code where it does something else. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. Hopefully that was useful to somebody out there on how to use create a polling of, in, of an input uh, using a task uh, in free Ortos. Okay, talk to you, stay safe, and see you next time.